what's going on? I just got back home from ODU. It's about just before 6 o'clock on Wednesday. Uh, this is actually the earliest I ever get home during the week because I'm normally either tutoring until about 8 o'clock p.m. or in class until that time. So Wednesdays are always nice. I might actually get to go to the gym afterwards. I just took a look at my quantum homework that was posted. It's not due this Thursday, it's due next Thursday. And though it, it's weird, it looks easy, but I also don't know where to start, if that makes any sense. So I'm not going to try to complete any of the homework yet. What I'm going to do now is I got my handy dandy Griffiths book, and the homework is all on uh, a little bit of many body physics and variational methods. So we're starting to steer clear of perturbation theory, at least for this homework, and then we're going back to time-dependent perturbation theory, which is when your potential is time-dependent. Uh, so right now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start cracking open the Griffiths book and try to get a better understanding on how many body quantum systems act. I'm not going to post in this video what the homework is asking because I have a feeling that people will have a tendency to try to help me before the homework's due, and I really just want to get this done by myself. So I hope you understand that I'm not going to show you what the problems are, at least in this video. Now all the material that we're starting to go over for quantum is actually stuff that we went over quite a bit in atomic physics, but just getting used to different professors' notations and things like that, it's a nice little refresher to go back in Griffiths and just sort of start over from scratch. What I've been doing is I've been going over variational principle again, and vari variational principle is another method of approximating things in quantum mechanics. Uh, so it sounds a little bit similar to perturbation theory. With perturbation theory, what you do is you can take a well-defined answer that you have, so you can take a well-defined solution to the Schrodinger equation where you know what the energy is, and you can find corrections to that if you allow for other things to get in the way, a perturbing potential. And you can do that to any arbitrary order that you want. The higher order you go, typically the better results you get. Um, with variational principle, what you do is you, you say is it's really helpful if you have no idea how to solve the Schrodinger equation for some potential. What it says is that you can take the expectation value of, of the Hamiltonian on some trial function. So you basically guess a wave function. You guess a wave function, you sandwich the Hamiltonian in between that guess, and what that spits out is an upper bound for the ground state energy. And you can tweak the parameters inside your trial function until you get a better estimate of the ground state. Now back to perturbation theory, the thing with this kind of the thing with perturbation theory is it tends to give you bad estimates on what the wave function are, but really good estimates on the energy. And it's sort of the vice versa for variational methods. Griffiths does a pretty good job showing examples of how to implement variational methods. So if you're curious on that, I mean Griffiths is probably available online. But really, for the rest of the day, what I'm going to be doing is studying this, studying just the many-body interaction stuff a little bit more, until I get a feel like I'm ready to answer some questions on my own, and then I'll go do the homework. So, in the other video where I was talking about how I study, that doesn't necessarily just apply to when I'm uh, taking exams or about to take an exam. It's always nice to sort of go over the material first before you start trying to solve problems. That's probably one of the dumbest things I've ever said. It's always better to learn material before trying to solve the problem, yeah, obviously. Now ideally tomorrow's video will be going over my uh, my last quantum midterm. So uh, that all, as long as my professor gives it back, that's the plan for tomorrow. I'm trying to make these videos every single day, so if, obviously some days are going to be more boring than other days. Some days will be like this, where I'm just studying. Some days I'll have other gen eds where I can't even get to the physics. like for my English or my art history class. You might be tempted to ask something like, well, if the content isn't going to be all that interesting for the day, why record for the day? Why not just save your energy for another day? And the reason for that is because this is forcing me to get much quicker at editing and much uh, more efficient with my time. So it's sort of a challenge for me. And it also forces me to try to make every day a little bit more interesting. I'm sorry if you didn't find this particularly interesting. Tomorrow should be better, and I'll see you guys there.